All right, friends, today we're going to practice uh, working with lists and some functions that are in Python, like the random function. We're also going to define our own functions, so quite a lot of things, and we're going to do them in a quick little program. This is going to be a Magic 8-Ball program. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick rundown on some basic list functions. So I'm going to name a list. Uh, this isn't part of the program, by the way. This is just me demonstrating a couple of things. So first off, lists are named by a variable name, one word, could be multiple words separated by underscores, but there cannot be any spaces, then an equal sign, then square braces. So my color list is going to include colors um, that I'm going to about to define, but I could, you know, have a list of numbers or anything I wanted, right? Um, numbers don't have to be in quotes, but colors as their strings, they need to be in quotes. So there's my color list, and I can print it out. We can add things to lists by using the append function. We can remove things from lists by name with the remove function. We can also pop things from the end of lists with the pop function, actually. It's called pop. And pop will remove the last thing on the list. So that's some basic list function ideas that we're going to use. Another thing we're going to do is use randomness. So randomness is actually really difficult to code, and that's because, if you think about it, how do you tell a deterministic thing like a computer program to be random? You really can't, not that I know of anyway. And so in order to get randomness, the way we code that is we will use something that is actually random that the computer can access, like maybe something about the amount of RAM being used at any given second, or the smallest digit in a microsecond of the actual time, or the temperature of the processor, something random like that. Obviously that sounds really difficult to code, and fortunately we don't have to. So we're going to use the import command and the name of the program. And so now we can do various things with this. We could use it to get us random numbers. So in this case, random dot rand and an int for integer. And then we type the range. It'll give us a random integer. We can also uh, pick things randomly from lists. So here's our colors list. Let's see what's in it. So it only has two colors in it, but that's okay. So I'll use random dot choice, and then the name of the list. So that's random. Uh, random is really, really useful. We can do all kinds of interesting things with that. The last thing we're going to talk about is functions. Functions are great because we can define them and we can reuse that code again and again and that saves us from having to type. It also makes editing and debugging our code a lot quicker because if we call the same function again and again that means we're not typing it again and again. That reduces our chances of making mistakes. It also allows us to only have to code something once rather than many times and that means if we want to fix it or change it, update it, we only have to do it once, not many times. It makes our code much more reliable and much easier to do. So here's a really basic function. I'm just going to say pick a number. We're going to call it pick a number and we're just going to have it pick a random integer like I did earlier. So all functions start with the word DEF for definition and then a name. So my name is pick a number and the name has to be all one word. This should be descriptive. And then two parentheses and a colon. So the two parentheses will hold variables that we can send to the function. We'll worry about that later. For now, we're just going to leave it empty. And then I'm going to press Enter. And notice that my cursor is four spaces over. Those four spaces indicate to Python that anything that's four spaces over after that function line is part of that function. So when I stop spacing things for over, it's not part of that function anymore. That's where the spacing is very important. 
people get confused by this. It doesn't actually have to be four spaces. It could be almost any number of spaces, more than none. What's absolutely critical is that they're all the same. In other words, you can't have some lines be three spaces and some be four and some be five. That won't work. And that's probably one of the most frustrating things about Python for beginners. So stick with four. Four is your best practice, basically. All right, so we're just going to make our function choose random integers. So let's just make a print that straight away. All right, so I'm going to press enter again and notice nothing happened. And that's because this is just how to do something. We didn't actually say to do it. So in order to actually make it do that thing, we have to call it by its name. And now we got a random number. Perfect. If we wanted to send a variable to that, I'll show you how we can do that. I'll show you how we can pass variables to things. So I'm just going to copy this. But this time I'm going to put a number in there. I'll say um, so I have two variables, the low and the high. And I'm going to copy this as well. And I'm going to put those variables in here. Great. So now you'll see if I run this like I did before, I'm going to get an error. And that's because I didn't tell it what these variables are. So that's not good. So let's make the low and high numbers really easy so it's obvious. So my low number is going to be the low part of my range. I'll make that zero. And my high, I'm going to make one. And if I keep running this, you'll see it. I'll never pick anything besides a zero and a one. And that's because that's what my range was. I can set it different numbers. I can make it whatever I want. And it picks something in that range. So that's the idea here with these argument variables. OK, so let's get on with our program. This is going to be a magic eight ball program. And we're going to start out by importing random, just like we did before. Imports need to be spelled correctly, and they are usually placed at the very top of the program, and you only call them once. It's important to only call them once because it slows down your program and serves no other purpose. So importing random again and again would be a bad practice. Now we're going to make a list. I'm going to call my list responses, and we're going to populate our list with the responses of the Magic 8-Ball. So these can be anything you want. I'm going to use words like yes, oops, no, oh. the more responses you have, the better your game is going to be. But I'm just going to put those in there because they're kind of the most basic ones. Now, we're going to use a while loop. A while loop is a way to make your, your program run for a specific amount of time. So if you can imagine, if it were a, a game where you had a player that had lives, you could say, well, lives, this would be your player's lives, are greater than zero, which would mean while the player is not dead, <laughs> you'll keep playing, right? Um, we're going to kind of, so that, that, in other words, means while true, while it's true that players are greater than zero. Player lives are greater than zero. You'll keep running this program. So we're going to call this while true. And notice true has a capital T, and while does not. This is going to make this loop forever. We're going to have to do something else to stop this from running. Now we're going to ask the player to type something. It doesn't really matter what they type, because we're not actually going to pay attention to what their question is. but this will stop the while true loop from just constantly printing new responses and make the player feel like you know it's really paying attention to whatever it is that they're asking. So I'm going to make my variable name ask, and I'm going to set that to be equal to input, I-N-P-U-T, parenthesis quote, and I'm going to use a backslash. That's the one above the enter key and a lowercase n. This is going to print a new line. I can actually do two if I wanted to. That'll print two new lines. And so now I'll say ask a 
question. All right, so the greater than sign is just something I like to do. It doesn't really matter. It's not special. We could type anything we want there. And now we'll just print a random response. So this is where having lots of responses makes it a whole lot cooler. So I'm just going to print random dot choice and then in parentheses responses. Notice I have two parentheses at the end so there's an equal number of, of parentheses total on that print line. That's all we really have to have to run our Magic 8-Ball program. Let's give it a shot. Ask a question. There we go. So that's our Magic 8-Ball program and uh, we can take our time and make lots of interesting and funny responses. But I want to talk about other functions so let's make this a little bit more complicated. Let's see if they're going to be really really lucky. In other words, I want to add a function here that a player of the game is super lucky, they'll get a special response. So I'm just going to add a couple of blank lines here and I'm going to define my function. So I'm going to write DEF and I'm going to call my function luck and I'm going to put parenthesis parenthesis colon at the end. I'm not going to send in any variables. We're going to choose a random integer uh, and that's going to be kind of our odds of how lucky we're going to be. I'm going to say number equals random dot rand int and I'm going to make my odds pretty good actually because I want this to I want to be able to see this so you can make your odds anything you want but the way I'm coding this right now it's gonna have a one in three chance of you actually seeing this special response so number equals random dot rand in one comma three now I'm just gonna to test to see if number equals equals one notice there are two equal signs that's testing to see if it actually does equal one and one is not in quotes because we're looking at an integer so if it does equal one I'm going to return true. True is a boolean. Uh, it's a capital T true. And otherwise, else, I'll return false. Notice false has a capital F. All right. I guess I need to have a couple of lucky responses. So I'm going to make a new list, and I'm going to call it lucky responses. These can also be negative too. We could say, uh, you know, today is the worst day ever, or something like that. <laughs> Just the luck really makes it unlikely, right? So we can type as many different things here as we want. And incidentally, we can also type them on new lines. So type as many of them as we want. And now down here, we'll ask them a question and we'll test to see if they're lucky. And so we'll say if luck colon. Now remember, luck is either going to be true or false. So essentially what this is saying is if this luck function returns true, we're going to do this first thing. And we're going to do that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is print random dot random choice. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to retype it. So if they're lucky, they'll print a lucky response. And otherwise, if they're not lucky, else we're going to print a regular response. Awesome. So let's try that. So ask a question. <laughs> all right. I don't feel like typing a lot of things, so I'm just going to type random letters. And so today is my lucky day. There you go. So if I keep asking it, sometimes I'll get my lucky response, and sometimes I won't. If I stop my program, I type Control Z and I make this a really high number like 1 and 10 and then run it again now you'll see that I really don't get my very special lucky response very often but occasionally I do so there we have it there is our magic 8-ball program and the more 
lucky responses you put in there and the more general responses you put in there, the more interesting it's going to be to play. Another thing you could do if you wanted is add uh, maybe like a quit function. So you could say ask a question or type Q to quit that and then we'll say if ask equals equals Q we'll use the special command break which will just break these this while true loop it'll take us out of the while true loop um, maybe we should say something before that like So let's try running that, and you'll see what the break command does. So I can ask questions, of course, just like before, or I can type Q, and now it says bye, and it closes it neatly for us. Anyway, that's our Magic 8-Ball program. I hope you had fun coding it, and until next video.